Notation is an, an absolutely critical thing in geometry. Um, you, you see two very similar looking items here. One that has AB with a line over it and one that just has AB. These represent two very different things. This represents uh, an object. So we're actually talking about the physical object here, which would be segment AB. So um, it's talking about the physicality of that. This one, on the other hand, is talking about uh, a measure of that. So two very different things based on this. Um, the measure uh, is, you know, this could be 14 centimeters. It could be lots of different things. So clearly this has to be about a measurement of AB, and this is the name of it, the object. And these matter greatly in how you write things um, and, and organize congruent statements and other things like that. Using something like that in a statement. So this is, uh, again, quite interesting that we're going to distinguish between equals and between congruence. And you'll notice that the notation here shows the measure of AB and the measure of A prime, B prime, C prime. When you're talking about measurements, you are talking about equality. In the next example, you'll notice that we are talking about the object AB and the object MR. In that case, when you talk about their value, you're going to talk about congruence because two objects are congruent and two objects are congruent and two measurements are equal. So the last one also is an equals relationship because this is about the measurement of ST and the measurement of FR. So congruence would not be the right way to write this. Another common thing is to try and use the words drawing, this guy, and constructing correctly. Drawing refers to a much more informal process. So if I wanted to draw the midpoint, I would place it there and then maybe uh, distinguish that there are uh, two sides that are equal to each other, here and here. And let's call this A, M, B. This is drawing a midpoint. And, and the point here is that um, by no means is M, you know, the exact midpoint, but by the way I've drawn it and the labeling, uh, I have created a drawing of it. To construct something is a much more um, uh, powerful uh, item. It, it really refers to this idea of you actually pulling out your compass and your ruler. And so if you're constructing the midpoint, you, you're going to take your arcs and physically construct that moment in time to find the midpoint of that. So one is very informal, uh, uh, like our guy here. This is a very informal relationship and just done by labeling a drawing. Constructing, on the other hand, means physically pulling out the compass and the ruler to create it. Next, let's take a look at naming of angles. An angle actually is unique in that it can have many different names. And um, you can name it, you always are going to focus on the vertex of that angle. So some of the potential names might be angle GTR um, or angle RTG. You could call it, in this case, angle T, and you could also call it angle five. Those are all valid names for that. Now, what I would say is that uh, the key here, of course, is that why we can use angle T, just one letter, is it's the only angle that's operating here. If there were other angles, we could not use that. The, the general best naming conventions are these two, in that they will always be valid in terms of that angle and its name. 
But uh, what you couldn't say, let's give you one that wouldn't work. You couldn't say angle GRT, for instance, because that would mean R is the vertex, and R is not our vertex. T is the vertex. Notice where it's positioned each time. Also, I hope you've learned from uh, constructions that you've done so far and the emphasis placed on it. Our, our typical feeling about measuring something is a ruler does that job, and in many cases it would. In geometry, we use the compass as our measurement tool. Why that works so well is that when we measure something between the tip of our compasses and its pointer, the distance between those two things gets measured exactly every time. There's no estimating, there's no rounding. Um, the distance between the, the pointer and that pencil or tip uh, will be an exact measurement. And so when we speak in geometry about measuring something, we're pulling out our compass and that's a really essential part of that. Now the last part of this little video will be recognizing what's happening during certain constructions. This is often how questions are posed on end of course exams, things like that, uh, semester exams, because often we can't have you pull out your compass and your ruler to do the actual work. So instead we give you pictures and ask you to basically under show us that you understood what they meant. Easy to asking for you to determine what the length is in terms of the two given lengths. So you'll notice uh, in our case, the length that we're interested in is this little part here, E to F. Now, how do I know how things were made? Well, I do notice the arc here is curved slightly this way. So what that means is we made our arc this way, which would be a CD. And then I notice that the other arc is curved the other way as if I came back a certain amount. And that looks like it came back exactly the distance of an AB. So to me, if I was describing E to F, it looks like I made a CD and then I subtracted an AB. This would be the exact value of EF. In the next case, uh, it looks like I've done a CD here, yeah. And I've done another CD here, yes. And then that last one looks like an AB. So if I was naming this, this is two CDs and an AB would be the description for that particular one. The key is to look at your arc curvatures to know which direction they're going. Do you see how this one up here is curved going the other way. So there was a subtraction uh, item that happened there. Again, to know whether you were able to construct things or not, what they do is provide you with a diagram and say, what am I doing here? What have I constructed? So let's go through that uh, carefully here. Um, this first diagram, these two sweeping arcs are used in actually two different constructions. They're used when you are making the midpoint of AB but it's also when you're doing the perpendicular bisector. You would have learned that those two items actually are the same construction because when you place your perpendicular bisector here, you get this guy, but you also actually got the midpoint at the same time. So those two constructions are kind of unable to distinguish the difference. In the middle one, I noticed something special about these arcs and how they're curved. Do you see how that is actually the, the center would be from A to B? That would be like the radius. And so would this, right? The, the circle is forming here. We use that technique when we have a center and we are making that arc to hit twice at C and B. We use that technique when we're doing a perpendicular that is not when the point is not on the line. So that would be this particular one right here, because what happens next is we continue the construction down below, and then we drop the perpendicular through there. So those curved arcs are very helpful to us. Finally, that last one there is actually quite easy, I think, right? We have an angle here. You can see we are in the process of constructing or copying that angle. So this is just us making a duplicate of that particular one. 
Let's look at three more and, and, and we'll call it good. And this one on the bottom left corner, the real key is this curvature here of the arc and this one. Can you see that that was created basically by a circle centered at A? And we use that technique when we are creating um, a perpendicular through a point on the line because what would happen next is we would make that arc from C and again we would drop that perpendicular through it. So this would be as an answer is it's the perpendicular when our point was on the line. And the, the giveaway to it was that this has a curved arc here and here based out of basically uh, A as the center of that circular pattern. The last two I think are quite straightforward. Here's a segment and we've copied the segment. So that's quite easy. And this last one, you can see what we've done. We've, we've bisected that angle. We have uh, used the angle bisector technique and we have created a ray that goes right through the center and bisects that. And so this would be uh, constructing an angle bisector. The key is to look at the curvature of the arcs and to allow those to give you the hints where the centers were at and what you were doing while you were doing it.